prophets. Um, and I, I'm going to tell you today about a fairly straightforward but powerful trick for multiplying the benefit that you can get from um, a, uh, a web traffic dashboard such as Google Analytics by uh, joining that data to data from the US Census to understand not just uh, where your traffic is coming from. Great, thank you. Not just where your traffic is coming from, uh, but who your audience is. And I should mention Dave Robinson, who's right here, literally taught me to program R about 18 months ago. So, you know, thanks. Um, really appreciate it. So um, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to walk through, I'm going to just speak with a blank screen, see if uh, play starts it again. Awesome. Well, you know, this actually is very pretty, so maybe we'll just uh, stick with that. So while that, while that comes back up, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through uh, why Charity Navigator uh, wanted to know um, so much about its audience, then very briefly, very briefly, because uh, I think that uh, um, it's almost self-explanatory once you get the punchline, uh, how we did it, and then some of the things that we were able to learn in a pretty short period of time on, on the basis of this technique. And you can try this at home. I hope that it is useful to other uh, people who are maybe involved in um, optimizing traffic to a website. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to try to go to the, all right, this is um, something. So it's uh, cool. So this is an example of a Charity Navigator ratings page. Uh, the organization is about 15 years old. Um, we rate a little over 8,000 charities on the basis both of public records disclosures related to their taxes and on information they provide on their website based on a variety of metrics that we consider to be representative of uh, good governance and organizational health. And Charity Navigator was founded in a context of um, sort of data scarcity. 15 years ago, people were just starting to use Google, Wikipedia was just starting up. There wasn't a lot of transparency in the nonprofit sector, and something was a whole lot better than nothing. Now that data is not so scarce, we actually live in sort of a data overwhelming environment, Charity Navigator is in the process of evaluating uh, where exactly we, uh, we can provide the most value uh, to users in this somewhat overwhelming context. Uh, you still need to figure out where you're going to make your donations to charity. You still need to figure out who deserves your money. Um, so fortunately, when I joined the organization in April, the org had already been using uh, Google Analytics for about 10 years. They were uh, an early adopter. And so uh, jumping in, I was able to find out a lot right off the bat. Uh, these obviously are a little bit gussied up um, after the fact in ggplot, but, but that's not really the point here. Um, you see that we get a nice bump in traffic in the last quarter. This is both because of the holidays and the U.S. tax season. Um, these are those 10 years of data broken up by week. Um, and you can see that, that we have these, uh, a few really big spikes. So in addition to the seasonality, uh, people come to Charity Navigator when there's been um, a natural disaster, when there's been a scandal. There's a whole lot of traffic around the election. Um, you know, we rate uh, the Clinton Foundation, we have a donor advisory around the Trump Foundation. Um, maybe I shouldn't talk about that stuff, but, you know, it's on everybody's mind. Um, that huge spike there, let's see if I can get the laser pointer. Anybody want to guess what that is, 2012, about March 2012? Coney. It's Coney, the Coney video. Um, the Coney video, if you haven't seen it, is... Um, strange. I, I don't actually know how else to describe it. Uh, it's linked to a charity called Invisible Children. And um, I don't get it. A lot of people didn't get it. And, uh, and, but it, it, it went viral and people wanted to know what this place was. That's an example of how Charity Navigator gets used. Now, pretty much all this stuff you can get right out of the box using Google Analytics, which is free unless you want access to um, uh, the, the raw data, which you can actually get from your web logs, in which case it only costs $150,000 a year. I suspect nobody has ever signed up for that. Basically, Google Analytics is free, and it's, it's incredibly powerful. You can get a great deal out of it just by putting a, a hook on your website. But one place uh, where it maybe needs a little bit of help, so you can move this along, is when you want to start to think about traffic in a geographic context, which for an organization like Charity Navigator, 
not linked to the election, by the way. Um, sorry for the color choices. I made most of these plots months ago. I wasn't thinking about it so much yet. Um, uh, you know, for an organization like Charity Navigator, it has a national reach. Uh, we really need to understand where this traffic is coming from. Uh, we try to be neutral politically about whether a, a charity is sort of on the left wing or the right wing. We're just looking at sort of uh, fiscal good governance and uh, accountability and transparency. And so we're used across the political spectrum, and we didn't really know much more than that. So uh, the way that uh, you can multiply that benefit um, from Google Analytics um, is by leveraging its API, which allows you to geolocate your traffic and to, um, to roll it up on pretty much any axis you like. So um, when I did that for Charity Navigator, I just took 10 years worth of traffic data and I rolled it up by date, latitude and longitude, and in some cases for the visualizations I'm going to show you, URL. The things that are in blue are what Google Analytics calls dimensions. They're like your group by uh, statement. And the ones that are in black are, are your metrics, um, which are, you know, metrics. Um, you might be wondering why I use latitude and longitude. Um, well, one thing, again, that, that's sort of a frustrating limitation of Google Analytics is that uh, it gives you uh, city name. If you want to query by city name, it can give you country, state. Um, but if you want to go to other levels of granularity, like zip code or county code, you kind of kind of have to roll that up yourself. But it's happy to give you uh, this ridiculously granular data. Um, this can result in what actually might legitimately call be a, a big data set. For us, it was about six gigabytes of, of data. Depending on how many distinct URLs you have, you could easily get over 10. Um, but you don't actually care about that level of granularity if you want to link it to um, uh, census data, because you, you know, you're not going to have anything uh, to compare it to. Um, so there's two ways to roll it up. Uh, you can download the shape files and overlap the points with the shapes to get the corresponding county codes, or you could do something much lazier, which is use an API and never even think about how that works. Uh, I strongly preferred that method because it was faster, um, and uh, I recommend that faster be preferred. That's why I'm not going to elaborate. Um, and um, once you've done that, uh, you can pull flat files from the census, which are rolled up at either the county or zip code level, to tell you pretty much anything that you want to know about your audience. We're going to look at population. And uh, thanks to Jess from uh, Data, what was it called? Data, Datascope. Um, we're also going to look at population density, because she had an interesting question about that. So. Um, now that you've done that, you need to pull these data sets together. You could do this right on your laptop uh, if you have a p powerful enough laptop, or else you could spin up uh, an, a, uh, an instance of our studio in the cloud. Um, I thought that was kind of overkill, because Google provides another essentially free tool. I swear I'm not paid by them, um, which is called BigQuery, um, which probably a lot of people have used, but I think probably a lot of people also have not used. Um, it's basically a lightweight SQL database that allows you to process arbitrarily large data sets, and processing is free for the first terabyte of queries and five dollars thereafter. So unless you've got you know, data from the Internet Wayback Machine and you're processing everything, or Wikipedia or something like that, this is going to be free. And then storage is uh, one or two cents a month for, give, for each gigabyte, something like that. So you can process these data in the cloud uh, in seconds, um, join them up, and at that point, you're basically uh, home free because there is an R API, uh, which I believe Hadley also wrote. He wrote everything. What, what can you do? Um, and, and then you're, you're done. You, you use your, your regular old tidyverse tools, and you can start to examine these data. And this, this I just want to emphasize again, is not hard. You, you will not have to spend so long to roll up these data in these ways if you use these tools with the one caveat that I got really frustrated parsing our URLs in R, and I did it in Python. Uh, I bet there's somebody who's an expert at processing strings in R here. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you afterwards. I found that very frustrating. Um, so let's see how this turns out. So this is a map that I showed without labels before. Um, and this is our popularity map, all-time visits per capita across the country. As I mentioned, we're very proud that we are used across the political spectrum in the United States. 
What the organization did not know was how geographically stratified that is. There's this big sort of L of indifference through the middle of the country. Um, and so Jess's thought was, oh, this looks like population density. Um, actually, uh, if you look at population density versus traffic, you get this really weird shape. If you, I'm not even going to try to guess what kind of function this is, except to say that I think it's actually wrong. I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, if you did decide to fit a linear model to that, figuring when in doubt, do the dumbest thing possible and see what happens, you get an R squared of 0.2. So there's definitely correlation, um, but it's, you know, not right. Um, so uh, it's not the whole story, anyway. Um, another thing that I thought was interesting, which you can get, this is um, IRS data um, plus census data. Um, and. Uh, this is a map of, of total income donated to charity uh, in a county divided by total adjusted gross income within that county. And my first thought was, well, shit, this is the complement of traffic to charity navigator. What are we doing wrong? Uh, that's actually not true um, because uh, I, I'm not going to go back, but this area um, has a lot lower uh, donations than, than this area where we have low traffic. Um, and this area where we have low traffic is very, um, uh, sorry, this area where we have high traffic um, has very high donations as well. Um, I think, I'm not a social scientist. I did my PhD with Dave, so we both did biology. Um, I think what's going on is Charity Navigator doesn't rate charities that take a religious exemption for tax purposes or which collect less than a half a million dollars a year in public donations, which excludes all churches and all small organizations, which means that a lot of the organizations that people are going to be donating to through the Bible Belt and uh, this sort of middle stripe of the country are going to be excluded from Charity Navigator ratings. And anyway, you don't need that information because you don't need anybody to tell you that that one organization that does so much good for your particular community is something worth supporting. Um, so, so that was really interesting. Um, and I, I want to take it to, you know, so we've, we've looked at sort of this all-time traffic, uh, stuff that's happened over uh, the course of Charity Navigator's at least recorded history. Um, but because Google Analytics lets me resolve by date, I can actually look at some of these um, crisis events that cause a lot of traffic and see how the traffic is stratified. And I chose to look at one here where the explanation was going to be super obvious ahead of time so you can see how this works out. And that is, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I included one other thing that I thought was interesting before I, I get to that point. Um, even though our traffic is stratified across the country, once you decide to use Charity Navigator to uh, examine charities, the charities you're most you're interested in are in many cases going to be the same no matter where you're coming from. So these are our top 20 charities, um, and each one of these data points represents one U.S. state. Um, the reason why I didn't sample counties but did states is because I was doing this like this morning and I thought it was cool and I was in a hurry. Um, and you can see that, that these points are um, actually not that far apart, this pretty bounded uh, range for each of these organizations. Um, but some of them are a little more spread apart than others. So for example, Heifer Project International, oh, I'm just about out of time. Um, so, uh, oh no, I'm not. Sorry, I was, I was thinking on the half hour, but I started, started early. Okay, Heifer Project International gives cows to people in developing countries and I think also goats and a variety of old McDonald options. So um, this is not a politically neutral idea. It's also not something that seems to be universally popular in what we'd think of as blue America. Have a look at um, this chunk of the Northeast. Um, in fact, it seems to be uh, very popular in this part of New England, uh, this part of Arkansas, farms, I, I don't know. Um, and then in the Northwest. Um, so, you know, that is definitely not something that, that I would have guessed going in, and that's something that I got uh, by joining these data and, and pulling this data out of the, the Google Analytics API and playing around with it um, in, uh, in Tidyverse. Uh, in, so, 
Um, I guess this just goes to show uh, you know, how far you can go with these ideas in a relatively short amount of time using just a couple of building blocks. So now I'm going to get to this point of, of looking at traffic over time. So um, here we are in New York. Um, a lot of us remember Hurricane Sandy quite vividly. If you live here, you remember it very vividly. Um, I fled to western Massachusetts and nonetheless found myself in a dark hotel room eating microwavable food that had not been microwaved. Um, my future wife uh, was bailing water out of her basement that nonetheless had to be stripped. Um, it sucked. And so you'll notice that um, the Northeast on, on uh, the day after the hurricane hit had about 10% of its pre-Sandy traffic even though a lot of the rest of the country, it's a little hard to see on the screen, had in many cases as much as 10 times or more the traffic that it was having before Sandy. So um, I'm going to uh, look at, sorry, so zoom in on that, just said this, blah, blah, blah. It's awful. Everything was destroyed and it was very unpleasant. Um, Sorry, Dave, I didn't do this in GG Animate. I tried, and what happened was I couldn't figure out how to do the title thing. So I'm glad you told me. Uh, this was, again, within the first couple weeks of me starting to use R for anything. Uh, so, you know, cut me some slack. I, I might have figured it out if I tried it on my own now. Um, but this is, a, this is a movie starting from two weeks before the disaster. Um, so uh, the hurricane hit right at the end of October. Um, you see traffic sort of fluctuating around the country. You're also going to see it bleeds into uh, the holidays, so it's a little bit harder to disambiguate those two causes. But you really saw how it spiked except for in the Northeast, and then it went up in the Northeast where it went back down in the rest of the country. A um, little harder to tell that because the holidays were mixing in. Um, I didn't want to normalize for too many things or else it was going to start to become not very honest. Um, so that's sort of the story that I wanted to tell. Um, uh, that's my whole talk, and so I'm happy to take any questions uh, or suggestions, and uh, if not, everybody can get out of here a little early. So thanks. Yes? Um, more about uh, methodological, if you're a charity evaluation. Yep. Absolutely. So, so um, this, is, this is a whole other talk um, that uh, it's actually not the area where I've been focused because Charity Navigator is involved in the strategic planning right now before we decide how to revamp our ratings process. Um, but uh, there's, there's a couple of issues. One is that we've, we've um, probably been somewhat responsible for creating what, what in the sector is called the overhead myth where you want to be as efficient as possible in terms of not spending anything on anything except programs, but the result is that organizations might not invest in infrastructure. And also, because you're looking at sort of inflows and outflows, you might wind up turning down certain kinds of grants just because you think it might Im adversely impact your charity navigator rating. So this is something uh, that the, you know, but if you don't do something, then the, the sector is ripe for abuse. So it's a, it's a really challenging problem. It's something that Charity Navigator, um, which recently had a, a leadership change, has been facing a lot of criticism in the last few years um, for not doing enough about. Um, and we're just now beginning to strike up partnerships in academia and basically with anybody else who'd like to jump in with some interesting ideas, play around with our data. We're, that's a, actually a great point. We're super stoked to talk to anybody. If you want to work on our stuff, I'd love to talk to you afterwards. So, so come on up. We are a nonprofit. Um, and I'm sort of a, a one-person one shop right now. So um, if this is a topic that's of interest to you, please uh, ping me, send me an email, whatever. It's absolutely a problem, and we absolutely need to do something, because it's an important service. So thank you. Especially now. Uh, yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. I should keep my eyes this way. It's the good part. <laughs> so there is an issue of like IP mapping uh, or mapping IP addresses. Is that how 
Google Analytics shows you where your users are? It's a black box how they do it. They just give you geolocated data based. It's got to be based on the IP addresses. Yeah. Um, so but is that you something don't we know just... whether it's any good or not. OK, so we're yeah. sort of just making the assumption that any errors are not biased in the location space. I am making that assumption. OK, yeah. thanks. OK, anything else? Yeah, Dave. Hey, Lisa, uh, did you mention the Wounded Warrior Project when you were looking at the results? Yes. Did, so Wounded, wounded is, Warrior Project, is. A, did, did you have a question? I was guessing it was Trump, right? No, no. Wounded Warrior Project is um, a charity that, that helps uh, disabled American veterans. And it, it, it became sort of a, um, uh, a, a mutual mutually damaging experience, that, that Wounded Warrior um, uh, made some decisions that the Charity Navigator, this was, this was years ago, um, uh, thought were questionable. And so Charity Navigator put up what's called a donor advisory. Um, and they, they, we also didn't give them a great star rating. I might be fudging some of the details, but I believe both of those things happened. Um, this resulted in an outcry from Wounded Warrior and a great deal of negative publicity for both organizations. Um, there's no donor advisory for Wounded Warrior, and Wounded Warrior now has a high rating on Charity Navigator. I can't remember if it's a three or four star. We do zero to four. Again, 15 years old, pre-Yelp. Um, so, but uh, um, part of the reason why the Wounded Warrior traffic is so high is because it was driven by that publicity uh, from both organizations. And, and a lot of our traffic is direct, either from news stories or from, or from the organizations themselves. And so um, I was going to show, I wasn't sure how much time there was going to be, I was going to show a core pleth of traffic uh, to Wounded Warrior. Um, it doesn't shake out uh, as politically as you might expect, but it, it definitely does have uh, more traffic in places that you associate with a stronger relationship with the military. Okay, happy to talk to anyone who has any other thoughts or wants to work on Charity Navigator, and thanks. Thanks for a great conference.